Many flesh and blood players ask the question, is it worth it to buy Classic Battles, Reinar vs. Dorinthia, a new duo of Blitz decks designed for new players and blinged out with everything from cold foils to full art mentors to hopefully catch the eye of established players and collectors as well. But as is often the case with products such as these, it is often a tightrope walk between designing a product that can satisfy many different levels and types of players to designing a product that can fulfill with excellence the needs of a very specific type of player. Is this a product for new players, established collectors, or has it missed the mark and landed in no one's court? Let's take a look. Classic Battles, Reinar vs. Dorinthia contains the following. Two ready-to-play, right-out-of-the-box Blitz decks, supposedly balanced against one another. Within those decks, you will end up with two Cold Foil heroes, one per deck, two Cold Foil weapons, again, one per deck, a total of eight Rainbow Foil equipment cards, as well as an illustrated mini-lore booklet and a quick-start playmat. Playmat? Cool! Oh, no, wait. The playmat is, sadly, not really a mat. It's a piece of paper. It's not even an illustrated piece of paper. At least put the box art on it. Well, I understand that including an actual neoprene mat is probably very costly for what is an already costly product. More on that in a moment. It is also not entirely unheard of in the TCG community. The lore booklet has some really cool, colorful illustrations in it, but it's just a small little paper pamphlet. I wish it had maybe a sturdier build to it, and if my memory is serving me correctly, most of this was already available on the website, so there's not a lot of new information here. I like that it's in color, I like that we've got some art, but it's a teeny tiny booklet. I would have liked a bigger booklet, better quality paper, something that you want to keep, cherish, put on the shelf. I mean, again, you're trying to justify a very high price tag on this product, right? But never mind lore books and playmats, the real attraction here are the two Blitz decks. This is a game meant to be played against one another, so how well do these two decks do just that, and do they have any cards of value or interest? Each of the two decks contain both reprinted cards and some originals found only here. Of particular note are the new young versions of heroes like Dorinthia, specialty weapons and a few other goodies, such as each deck having two Majestics, Full Art Tutor, and the like, with the majority of the remaining cards being essentially two of inclusion. And I'll talk financial analysis in just a moment, but just looking at gameplay and construction, there's a lot going on here, though not all of it is good. Reinar is the worst of the two decks, with an uninspired brute build that is easy to pilot and not much else. His new weapon is literally a strictly worse romping club, very disappointing, especially once you see what Dorinthia is packing. And the only other things of interest here are maybe, maybe, the new Brute Tutor and Alpha Rampage. But despite all this, and despite that I will contend this deck is the less impressive of the two by a lot, when speaking in terms of balance, it is actually fairly well matched against Dorinthia. The big disparity is that, speaking in terms of a competitive analysis, the Dorinthia deck feels a lot more developed and a lot more like what you might play against your friend's established Blitz decks. If nothing else, this Dorinthia deck is in line with the better Blitz precons we've already seen. In fact, I'd rather play with this Dorinthia Blitz than many of the Tales of Aria 1s. The Dorinthia deck is much more in line with what we have seen in pre-constructed Blitz decks. There's even a chase card in the form of Glistening Steel Blade, which I will talk about in a second. But just in terms of deck construction playability, this is both a lot more interesting and a quality deck to play out of the box. But it also has some interesting paths for upgrades should you want to answer the calling. However, in my playtesting, I feel very confident in saying that these decks nonetheless are very well balanced against one another if no upgrades are done. Now, 
Dorinthia is still what I'd call the stronger deck, but in casual games, it doesn't overwhelm every time. And honestly, and again, I'm speaking for casual games, just being jammed, these really are balanced decks. Balanced enough. Balanced is tough to begin with, and I'd say these achieve that. Another huge advantage of the Dorinthia deck is that the new young hero version of Dorinthia is actually quite cool. And there's a great synergy between her, Glistening Steel Blade, and Dawn Blade Resplendent, where we can both add and keep counters to this new weapon. In all honesty, established players just looking to pick up singles, these are the three best singles out of both decks. But I just don't see the same in the Reinar package. As a hero, he's okay, but that Bone Basher is just sad. And to be honest, I'm still not sold on Alpha Rampage. So here is actually where you have the big disconnect. For established players, only one out of the two decks looks like a good pickup, but for casuals, just wanting to jam two balanced games against one another, these are actually really great, especially when you figure that randomly grabbing any two blitz decks in the wild may not result in the same level of balance. So casuals are going to be much, much more inclined towards this product, except, remember I talked about just picking up two blitz decks? That's going to be significantly cheaper because the sticker price on this is a whopping $49.99 US. So regardless of the value in this, that price tag is really high. And it's what I'm going to say is the overall problem. You have to ask yourself why. Why wouldn't you just pick up a complete playset of say, the Monarch Blitz decks, which would cost less than this one product? or certainly all three of the Tales of Aria Blitz decks. Even for a new player, that's a better use of their money. And when you consider that if that new player wants to start making the step towards competitive, only the Dorinthia deck has the potential to come along for the ride, that makes this product even less appealing to the new player. What about financial value? If you were to buy every card in these decks, you'd spend a total of about $117.92, which is a little more than double the cost of the box. The most valuable card overall is, of course, Glistening Steel Blade, $27.95 each. Reinar is, interestingly, more than Dorinthia, don't ask me, at $9.95. Dawn Blade Resplendent, also another one that I really like, $9.10 with Dorinthia herself just under nine bucks. But the prices drop really quick, and after Bone Basher, we've only got a handful of cards in the two to three dollar range, and by the time you're getting down to run through at $1.35, most of that remaining equipment is at a buck or less, and everything else drops off a cliff from there. So if we were to eliminate all of the bulk from that value, basically any card that isn't worth at least a dollar, we're still left with about $78.85. But again, most of that is tied up in just 12 cards. A lot of people may be watching this and thinking, hey, getting that much more value than the price seems to counter the idea that this is overpriced. It doesn't. It is. Keep in mind that it's not like you could pick this up and sell off all of those cheaper cards. You're going to struggle to sell those run-throughs for a buck 35, not to mention the giant handful, the majority, in fact, of 20 cent cards. And prices are likely going to continue to stabilize, especially with this product selling at so many locations for less than that giant MSRP, and I'll touch on that in a moment. But again, if you are a new player, just picking up the existing Monarch Blitz decks, or perhaps the Tales of Aria ones, is going to both save you a lot of money and, well, get you the same experience in many ways. Yeah, they are balanced against each other, and yeah, the Dorinthia deck is pretty cool, but I would still say get the whole play set of Monarch Blitz decks. That's my use and my advice for the new players. For existing players, yeah, you want the Glistening Steel Blade most likely, and maybe you're like me and you really want to pick up the new young Dorinthia and her new Dawn Blade. That right there is getting close, but not quite to the price of this product. So at that point, asking yourself, ah, do I want a few more cards from this? Do I want to spend the money and just get the complete decks? I can see it being there, but again, just barely. No, the biggest interest here is to collectors. There's a lot of original cards and cool treatments, and again, with stores selling this for below MSRP, I've seen it as low as $39.99 at some of my local game stores, then suddenly it becomes a cool assortment to add to the collection, or even just to adorn your shelf. But for new and established players, I'm gonna say this is essentially a miss. Final conclusion. 
Classic Battles, Reinar vs. Dorinthia is overpriced and delivers questionably less than the average Blitz deck, especially where the Reinar deck is concerned. But while it can be argued that these are less than optimal Blitz decks, or that some of the new cards are lackluster, none of that would be a major problem if it had, say, a 1999 MSRP. But at $49.99, not only is the value not there, but the cracks in this product become impossible to ignore. Nonetheless, there are some interesting new additions to the game via these decks, and many new players will enjoy and benefit from picking up a duel of decks in a single box. Though again, grabbing two existing Blitz decks, or all four, is still considerably cheaper and likely has a better play experience. For new players at MSRP, I must give this a D for do not buy. Your money is much better spent on the existing Blitz decks out there. For existing players at MSRP, if you must, you can go ahead and pick one up and be satisfied with the best better new cards like, again, Dorinthia, so I'll give it an unimpressive C. Collectors are going to see the most interest here, especially as this is the first, and who knows, maybe only, in a new series. I feel that a die-hard flesh and blood collector will still walk away with a feeling of about a B- minus of worth. Be advised that these are indeed selling for less than MSRP at many game stores, and the ability to buy for less increases the worth. In isolation of cost, these decks are still good for new players, and there's enough value to say that this is an acceptable C for them at $39.99, a C plus for existing players at that price, and yeah, all right, solid B for collectors if they are able to get it for $39.99. Do not, under any circumstances, pay markups for this product. Do not pay markups. This is something that you maybe want to scoop up if you see it discounted on the shelf, or if you're getting a present for someone who's expressed interest in the game. But as far as this goes for $49.99, I say not a penny more. But that is just my evaluation, and what matters most is yours. Are you going to pick up classic collections at your local game store? Let me know why or why not in the comments below, and I hope very much this video has been of some help to you. Remember, you can help me out a lot just by remembering to subscribe, hitting like, leaving that comment, or especially by watching any one of my myriad other flesh and blood review videos, which can be found in this video's description. Welcome to Shuffle Up and Play. We have Jamie Parks, Splinter Twin, LSV's Birthing Pod. Jamie Park was the first pro Magic player that I looked up to. And I'd also like to advocate that I despise Luis. <laughs> no card in any of our decks can be over one dollar. What am I supposed to find with a dollar? We, we might as well just play popper then. What, what's the point? It goes the fastest, because it's red. It's statistically more likely to be pulled over by the police, so it means it goes faster. I'm going to throw that Sarah Avatar. What kind of seven is this? Down to five, down to five, down to five, down to five, down to five. Guess Would you like to pay the two? Guess what, baby? I ain't doing, I ain't doing jack. <laughs> <laughs>